Shalom, peace. The scripture reading today is from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 22, verses 1 through 5. Thus says the Lord, Go down to the house of the king of Judah and speak there this word and say, Hear the, Lo- hear the word of the Lord, O king of Judah, sitting on the throne of David. You and your servants and your people who enter these gates, thus says the Lord. Act with justice and righteousness. Deliver from the hand of the oppressor anyone who has been robbed. And do no wrong or violence to the alien or to the orphan or to the widow. Nor shed innocent blood in this place. For if you will indeed obey this word, then through the gates of this house shall enter kings who sit on the throne of David, riding in chariots and on horses, they and their servants and their people. But if you will not heed these words, I swear by myself, says the Lord, that this house shall become a desolation. Well, good morning. And first of all, I would like to say thank you for the warm welcome you have given me, a stranger, an alien in your midst. (laughs) And I have uh, felt that warm welcome, so I really do thank you. And I'd like to begin by telling you a short story. It's the story of a man who was arrested in his home country for selling liquor without paying the proper taxes on the sales. Now, the charges were probably exaggerated in order to get him to make an additional payoff to some official or another, but there he was sitting in jail with no promise of getting out anytime soon. Eventually, his family was able to raise enough money to bail him out, and they immediately snuck him out of town and sent him, sent him to America. Once here, he started working but it took took him about five years to bring his family here to America to join him. And included in that family was a son born just a few few months after he left his homeland, a son that he had never held, never seen in person. Within a year, another son was born here in America, the first American citizen in the country, I'm sorry, in the family, There were now three boys and a girl. All three boys served in the US Armed Forces. Three of the four children got college degrees and two of them got graduate degrees. That baby boy, the first American citizen, grew up to serve as a judge in a state court for over 30 years. And when he retired, his daughter ran for and won election to succeed him. I know this story because that baby boy who grew up to be a judge also grew up to be my father. And it was his father who jumped bail in Poland in order to come to this country. I could tell a similar but slightly less dramatic story of immigration on my mother's side, but I'll spare you. So when we talk about immigration, it is a very personal issue for me. If my family had had to deal with the enforcement of immigration laws as they are currently being enforced today, I'm not sure I would be standing here before you. And when I look at the people coming to our border today, I see people seeking out their promised land, just as my grandparents sought their promised land some 90 years ago. And so I turn to the texts that we shared this morning that uh, Julie allowed me to select First from Exodus chapter 22. You shall not wrong a stranger or oppress him, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. You shall not ill-treat any widow or orphan. If you do mistreat them, I will heed their outcry as soon as they cry out to me. So first of all, we all have an immigration story. Unless uh, we are of Native American descent, a tiny minority of us in this country, we all have an immigration story. And when we forget that immigration story and apply a harsher standard to those who wish to fulfill the same dreams as our ancestors, we are defying the principle as laid out in that verse. Further, 
We are God's instruments. We know this, right? We're God's instruments of healing. The prayers that we just offered as a community a few moments ago. Those of us who have been blessed with plenty, we are God's instruments for helping the needy. Similarly, in this case, we must hear the cries of immigrants at the border and act as God's agents to end this abuse. We saw the power that our shared response could have this past week. We changed our government's stance, but we can't be satisfied because we know that the work is not done and we have a lot more to do, a lot more to change. And then there's Exodus 23. When you see the ass of your enemy, right? Someone you don't really like, lying under its burden and would refrain from raising it, you must nevertheless raise it with him. You shall not oppress a stranger, for you know the feelings of the stranger, having yourselves been strangers in the land of Egypt. This stuff is easy when it's someone you know, right? We all stand up for our family. We all stand up for someone we work with. We all stand up for someone in our neighborhood. But when it's someone we don't know, who doesn't have someone else to stand up for them, that's when our work is really important. Over 100 years ago, actually in 1881, the Jewish community established an organization called the Hebrew Immigration Aid Society. It's called HIAS. Not a really great acronym, but that's what it is. And so it was established by a group of Jews of German descent who were mostly professionals, people who had already made it in this country, and they saw a group of Russian Jews coming to this country. And quite frankly, the German Jews looked at the Russian Jews as peasants. But they created this organization anyway to help those Russian Jews get acclimated here in this country. It's hard to find a Jewish family today that has not somehow been impacted by Hyas. For decades, it helped Jews, mostly refugees, particularly after the Holocaust, come to this country and get settled. However, a funny thing happened in recent decades. The stream of Jewish immigrants to this country became a trickle, in part because many Jewish refugees today choose to go to Israel over the United States, but also uh, most of the Jews who needed to get out of where they were simply did. And so since the early 2000s, this organization, Hyas, has redirected its efforts to refugees from other countries who are not Jewish. They have gotten involved in the aftermath of conflicts in Afghanistan, Bosnia, Bulgaria, Czechoslovakia, Ethiopia, Haiti, Hungary, Iran, Morocco, Poland, Romania, Tunisia, Vietnam, and the former Soviet Union, and that list is not exhaustive. They stand at the ready today to help refugees from Syria when they are able to get out. And so it's not just about helping the people who look like us, who practice the same religion as us, it's about helping those who need our help. And then there's the third and final text that we shared together this morning that I just read from Jeremiah 22. Remember that Jeremiah himself lived through the destruction of the first temple and watched as a huge number of his fellow Israelites became refugees. He knew the plight of refugees. And he said, do what is just and right. Rescue from the defrauder him who is robbed. Do not wrong the stranger, the fatherless, or the widow. Commit no lawless act. At the end of the day, isn't that what it's all about? Doing what is right and doing what is just? I have a feeling that the Christian tradition and the Jewish tradition stand in agreement on the idea that the end